Daddy Monty. How Italy's too-big-to-fail bank is suddenly bankrupt. Welcome back, Wealthy Nation. I'm Adrian. Today, we're talking about neoliberalism in real life, specifically neoliberalism in banking, and we're going to use an example from Italy. And shout out to one of our Share the Wealth viewers, Matteo Montanari, for suggesting this topic. Banca Monte de Pasci di Siena. I do not speak Italian, but I... I like to do an Italian accent when I say Italian words. Matteo Montanari, thank you for suggesting that I take a look into Montepaschi de Siena because it was really enlightening. There's a lot to learn there. Banca Monte de Pasci de Siena. Banca Monte. We're about to watch as the world's oldest bank, Banca Monte de Pasci de Siena, which is over 500 years old, ceases to exist. As a bit of history, they were founded in 1472 in the wake of the bubonic plague. The original purpose of the Monte de Pasci de Siena was to issue interest-free loans to poor people. In their prime, they were central to the economic vitality of Tuscany, stimulating commerce before Italy was even the fully formed country that we know it as today. MPS maintained this reign of benevolence for over 500 years, but then things took a turn when neoliberalism infiltrated Italian banking. In 1995, the charitable bank was transformed from a statutory corporation, which is a company that provides services of value to the public, to a limited company. They spun off their charitable arm into a separate entity called Fondazione Monte de Pasci de Siena and had this foundation invest in the bank. Until the first Italian government bailout in 2013, the Fondazione MPS was the single largest shareholder in the Banca MPS. So, what caused their downfall? MPS was an early adopter and enthusiastic advocate for neoliberal banking practices, like mortgage-backed securities and derivative swapping, in the late 1990s and early 2000s as neoliberalism spread from the West and crept into European culture. Fully swept up in the investment banking craze, MPS started making riskier and riskier decisions without realizing the potential danger. As early as 2001, they were boasting six new securitization deals in a year, with three in October alone. And this was unprecedented at the time. Eventually, this unfounded financial engineering caught up with them. Three particularly bad purchases wrecked their balance sheets, and MPS has never recovered. Now, the oldest bank in the world is weeks away from selling its remaining assets to its largest competitor. The most significant incident in the downfall of MPS was a derivatives transaction in 2009 with the Japanese company Nomura, which led to massive losses on both sides. Nomura lost $290 million, while MPS lost $130 million from the investment, and rubbing salt in the wound, both banks sued each other for various damages. MPS lost big in court, too. Ultimately agreeing to drop their lawsuit, which claimed 1.5 billion euro of damages against Nomura, and then paying Nomura 359 million euro, approximately $415 million, to settle the other lawsuit, for which Nomura had originally claimed damages closer to a billion euro. So that's a small victory for MPS. As if things couldn't get worse for the banca, three of their executives were accused of financial fraud, found guilty, and sentenced to prison in the aftermath of this transaction, which is now known as Alexandria. The neoliberal brass at Banca Monte de Pasci di Siena thought it'd be a good idea to lie about their bottom line to make this deal happen. They don't seem to regret this decision either, as former CEO Antonio Vigny was paid approximately 4 million euro when he stepped down from his post in 2012. In October 2014, Vigny, along with former chairman Giuseppe Mossari and former finance boss Gianluca Baldassari, were all sentenced to three years and six months in jail for, quote, misleading regulators. Interestingly, they appealed this sentence and were acquitted by the Italian Supreme Court in May of 2019, but these three men were also on trial for a separate higher-stakes lawsuit for false accounting, market manipulation, and misleading regulators. On November 8, 2019, Vigny was sentenced to seven years and six months in prison, Massari got seven years and three months, Baldassari got four years and eight months, and a fourth co-conspirator named Daniele Pirandini was sentenced to five years and three months. A total of 13 bankers from MPS, Deutsche Bank, and Nomura were sentenced to prison that day. 
Their sentences can still be appealed, but for now, a handful of neoliberal leeches are facing prison, and we can optimistically see this as progress towards a post-neoliberal future. The MPS ex-bosses might see some familiar faces behind bars too, as 2020 saw three additional ex-MPS executives sentenced for financial fraud. Shortly before the Alexandria ordeal, MPS had negotiated a derivatives trade with Deutsche Bank which also went south. This investment, codenamed Santorini, tanked in 2008 during the global financial crisis, but MPS took a rain check on their 367 million euro loss by trading their trade again, hoping that things would bounce back in a couple of years. That plan didn't pan out and MPS just watched their losses get worse. The Alexandria and Santorini disasters combined cost them an estimated 5 billion euro. In October 2020, ex-chairman Alessandro Profumo and ex-CEO Fabrizio Viola were sentenced to six years of imprisonment for their involvement in both of these catastrophes. The ex-president of statutory affairs, Paolo Salvadori, was also sentenced to three years and six months. All of these men have filed appeals and currently remain free, but with a grim future looming. So while they await a higher court's decision, let's look to the sale of whatever is left of Banca MPS. The Italian government currently owns 64% of Banca MPS after bailing them out several times over the past decade. But the government has committed to returning MPS to the private market by the end of 2021, which means they need to sell it. The government invited Unicredit, the largest bank in Italy and one of MPS's direct competitors, to come and dumpster dive for diamonds in the cesspool of faulty loans and bad investments that MPS financially engineered over the years. A major problem in this deal, though, is that everyone knows the Italian government is desperate to sell. As a result, Unicredit has unilateral power to set their own terms. They've convinced the Italian government to sell MPS in pieces, so Unicredit can purchase the most valuable assets and leave the hemorrhaging investments behind. They'll also receive a massive 2 billion euro tax credit to help with the costs of merging. In other words, Unicredit will get to pick up the last remaining profitable pieces of MPS without having to take on any of the liabilities or bad investments, and it will cost them next to nothing. Many citizens and politicians are concerned about the consequences of this acquisition, as an estimated 7,000 jobs could be suddenly eliminated due to redundancy. With an average cost of €200,000 for an employee that is four and a half years away from pension, MPS's staff cuts could cost the state more than €1.4 billion. Euros. Alternatives to a Unicredit deal include the Italian Treasury issuing the additional €2.5 billion euro that MPS desperately needs in the short term. After the money it has already invested, this wouldn't be too otherworldly, but it puts an additional cost on taxpayers and doesn't solve the problem of getting MPS back onto the private market. Matteo Salvini, the leader of Italy's Conservative Party, also offered up the idea of integrating MPS with other local banks who focus on lending to small and mid-sized businesses. The Treasury should take time and push for a tie-up with Italian banks that are focused on lending to small and medium-sized enterprises instead of rushing to sell it to Unicredit, Salvini said. This isn't a bad idea at all, but the Italian government is set on getting MPS back onto the private market as quickly as possible. Unicredit is far and away the leading candidate to absorb the remaining valuable assets of MPS. The negotiation is in its final stage this month, October 2021. It has been delayed several times, but we can hope for a final agreement by the end of this month, and we can expect one, almost certainly, by the end of the year. Unicredit has nothing to lose and an unknowable amount to gain. They might purchase some of the MPS assets from the Italian government, they might walk away from the deal entirely, or in a shocking twist, the Italian government could have a change of heart. The last word on the fate of MPS lies with Prime Minister Draghi, who is not actively involved in the talks with Unicredit. The Treasury is committed to protecting jobs and making sure Unicredit takes on as many workers as possible. The Treasury will also strive to preserve the MPS brand in some of its Tuscan branches. By all indications, Unicredit will leave with a decent purse of MPS assets. But... The tale of Banca Monte de Pachi de Siena has been a hell of a ride so far. Who knows what's coming next? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more content. To summarize all this, neoliberalism is a term that encompasses all this crazy financial engineering. Repealing the Glass de Gaulle Act so that commercial banks could engage in investment banking activities, like mortgage backed securities, is an example of neoliberal economics. 
The global financial crisis was caused by banks recklessly trading derivatives of these mortgage-backed securities, and the crash is sometimes referred to as the subprime mortgage crisis because banks were allowed to bundle together a bunch of risky mortgage loans where they didn't verify people's incomes, and because mortgages were historically such a great return, these big bundles were given higher ratings than they deserved. They were falsely rated as a prime investment, when really, they were subprime mortgages. Banca Monte de Pachi de Siena is unique because it was hit during the global financial crisis, but has been dying a slow death compared to the immediate crash in bailouts of other banks. Their slow death has made it harder for them to raise capital from the EU and the Italian government, so they're desperate for cash. Meanwhile, as the company is crashing, multiple executives have been convicted of financial fraud to facilitate the ill-advised derivative deals throughout the 1990s and 2000s. Two batches of their CEOs and chairmen, along with a statutory auditor and a financial chair, have all been convicted in Italian courts. But, as Brian Stevenson says in Just Mercy, we have a justice system that treats people better when they're rich and guilty than when they're poor and innocent. These men are currently free pending their appeal, a luxury of the white-collar prison system. The world's oldest bank is about to be sold to its largest competitor. In just a few days, Banca MPS's status as the oldest bank in the world will go from is to was. Unicredit will get to leave with only the profitable assets and a 2 billion euro tax credit to accommodate the costs of merging. Meanwhile, the Italian treasury will hold on to the damaged goods, the hemorrhaging investments, and stick it in their portfolio with other failed banks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more content.